Hi, in this tutorial I'll be creating two similar scenes, one in Blender EV Next and the other in Unreal Engine. Stay tuned until the end. Let's start with Blender. I've set up a scene here and I want to explain its components. I'm using the 4.2 version and I've chosen AV Next. I've covered this engine in a tutorial which you can find here and the link is also in the description. AV Next can render in real time, even faster than the legacy version. Press C and choose Render. As you can see, moving the camera doesn't affect the lights. I want to render this view here and replicate it in Unreal. I have a sunlight in the scene with the following attributes. As you can see its settings. The lighting has a bluish tint, creating cold and foggy atmosphere. After trying many rotation values, I found that this value works best for this view. If you are interested in learning about lighting tips, you can watch this tutorial. The other fields in the light settings are fine and don't need to be changed. I also have fog volume in the scene. It has blue tune and is very simple. You can also watch the professional fog tutorial here. If I disable the fog, the scene worsens and it doesn't look good. Ok, let's discuss the camera. If I select it and go to the camera settings, the focal length is set to 70. Higher values can make your scene more cinematic. Depth of field has been applied to add blur to the human character and the rock. Everything looks good. We don't have any other adjustments to make with the camera. Let's take a look at the creature and its shader. I don't need the fog volume for now. The model doesn't have too many details and the skin shader is also simple. Let's take a look at the skin shader by opening a shader editor window. If you want to learn in detail about creating a skin shader, watch the tutorial here. The subsurface scattering is set to high because the scene light is not powerful. Lower values can result in dry skin. As you can see, the light is almost passing through the skin. I also apply displacement to the model, and you can see it in the modifiers. At render time I will use a subdivision level of 3, which will produce better results than view mode with a subdivision level of 1. In the render settings, if I go to the shadow section and open it, the rays field is set to 4. Higher values result in better shadows. The next is ray tracing. I explained these options in detail in the EV Next tutorial. In the resolution field, I've selected one, which means full resolution for ray tracing. And screen space has been chosen for it. I don't need the other fields. These options are sufficient. For the final step, let's check out the compositor. Here, I have a set of nodes to add post effects to the final render. However, I can't see any result yet since I haven't rendered anything. You can watch the compositing tutorial here. The color node will be applied to the background of the image, as the image itself doesn't have any background. I made it transparent in film and enabling the transparent option. You can see the background is transparent in the render view. Color balance will be applied to add a blue tone to the render, and then the lens will be distorted. And then a glare node will be necessary for adding shining areas. These three nodes are for adjusting the image brightness. Ok, let's render the scene. We'll return to the compositor after rendering. Before rendering, I need to switch to solid mode using the Z key to free up RAM and VRAM. Then render. The render has finished in almost one minute and this is the composited result. Ok, let's head to the compositor. We can modify the result and then render again. For example, let's adjust the exposure. Or adjust the contrast using the brightness contrast node. And finally, the composite and viewer nodes will display the final render. 
I need to place some details and small facts in Photoshop. Alternatively, you can use GIMP or Krita. I won't be recording the Photoshop section. It's not as important. For this tutorial, I just want to compare the final renders. This is the final result. Okay, let's export the entire scene for Unreal. I need to export each object separately. But before that, I need to bake the modifiers to the objects, for example, displacement. While the object is selected, go to Object and Convert and then Mesh. Then in the File menu, select Export and choose the FBX file type. The file name is fine. Check the Selected Objects option to export only the creature. Everything looks good, but disable animation. I don't have any animation and export it. I don't need to export the volume, lights or camera, just the models are enough. I've created the same scene in Unreal, including the lights, volumes and all necessary actors. Let's review them and their properties. First, the directional light. Its direction is the same as in the Blender scene. The intensity is almost the same and correct and the color is appropriate. I set the other fields for the scene earlier and I didn't record it because it was a long process. I've set the indirect light to 1.5. The default is 1, but I need more indirect because the scene is foggy. Alright, I didn't modify anything else. Let's review the others. Exponential fog is the default fog volume in Unreal. You don't need to create a volume shader. As you can see, the density is set to 0.07, which is proper. The scene looks awful when I disable the volume. The density of the second fog is 0.1. Next, let's adjust the sky atmosphere color. White is good for it, and I think the other fields are also good. The next is the sky atmosphere. Fog is working through this actor and it's simulating ambient light from the sky in the scene. The atmosphere value is good. Me scattering is the main color and white works well, matching the fog sky color. The sky light is a global light without shadows that adjusts scene lighting alongside the directional light. Adjust its intensity based on your requirements. The color is white and I don't need to change it. When you create the scene, these actors are placed by default. I didn't change some of them. For example, the volumetric cloud. Next is the camera. The focal length of the 51 has been chosen for the camera. It's different from Blender, but the view is almost the same. This type of camera is different from an ordinary camera. It's capable of changing its settings to industrial camera settings. You can find it here. And the next camera is the regular camera in Unreal. Okay, let's check out the creature's shader. The skin doesn't have any special details, but it's sufficient for the scene. Press Ctrl and Space to open the content drawer, and then let's open the shader. It's a simple shader with a subsurface scattering option. Head to the subsurface section and open it. This is the subsurface profile. I've set a color and range for it. Let's modify it. Subsurface scattering in Unreal is performing slightly better than in EV Next. You can scale up the subsurface scattering using this field. Okay, the next actor is post processing. I didn't use too many post processing effects since I want to add effects using Blender Compositor. I need to render on the same circumstance, but Lumen is active for both global illumination and reflection. If I change it to ray tracing, you can see it's very bad. Lumen is powerful, but it's heavy for the GPU. Almost there is no real-time global illumination in ray tracing mode. Alright, the next effect I am using is ambient occlusion. You can find it here. In Unreal 5, the AO is weak in some scenarios and useless. As you can see, it has a weak effect. However, I use it for near distances from the camera. For example, it has a great effect on the rock near the camera. Okay, before rendering, let's check out the quality settings. It's on Epic. I can also set the material quality to Epic. 
Let's activate the camera view. And using this shortcut, select high resolution screenshot. Here I can use the size multiplier. For example, 4 means 4K. Press capture. This is the final result. In the next step, I need to composite it inside Blender. In Blender, you should drag the image in and then connect it to alpha over. However, I don't need alpha over anymore. The same effect has been applied. Now I should render again. Go to render and click on render image. And I can save it through image and then save as. This is the final result after adding some details in Photoshop. Choosing a real-time render engine depends on you, but be aware that Blender is a 3D software where you can add animations, modify the model, and so on. But Unreal is a game engine and doesn't have modeling or sculpting capabilities. Besides, Unreal Engine consumes more RAM and CPU resources, and Unreal Engine is more demanding to execute. Choosing a render engine depends solely on your specific needs. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And if you have any questions or ideas, feel free to share them in the comments.